So I'm on the uh, BJJ Fanatics website, and I see three new videos by some guy named Thomas Radzinski. Uh, are you familiar with that guy at all? Nope, absolutely not. No? Well, he's got some good stuff. Three new, three brand new videos. Um, they're getting amazing reviews, which is good to see as well. Uh, but you got to tell us about them real quick? Yeah. You know, I had yeah, you guys already know, but I had the um, opportunity to go to Boston, shoot three more instructionals, one on Butterfly Hook, complete guide for Butterfly Hook, to um, wrap, lapel, and submit them. And three, we have uh, taking the back. It's particularly designed for guys for over 40 because there is no climbing involved. All the back days are on the ground. Uh, very, very full and effective system. So dip into it. I'm really hoping that this is going to help your jiu-jitsu and really take it to the next level. BJJFanatics.com. Just search R-O-Z-D-Z. We have all had that situation where after class is when we want to ask a question. And, uh, Thomas, a lot of those questions you've already answered, right, at Ask a Black Belt. Yeah, it's another podcast that I'm running. Um, it, it, you know, it's on podcasts, all podcast platforms, plus on, on YouTube. You can find it anywhere. Just search for my name. Search, search for Ask a Black Belt. At this point, over 100 episodes, different questions, jujitsu, life-related but something that everybody comes across, and often these questions sink in our mind, but we don't ask for whatever reason. So if that benefits you, go there, listen. It actually might help your jujitsu, might help your life as well. And if you have any questions, find me on Instagram and drop me a line. I'll be happy to answer your question and mention your name during the episode. Welcome to Raw Radio. And we're live. Here we go. So you're not distracted, but you're not focused. Correct. What does that make you? It's just I'm, in, I'm where I am. I'm right <laughs> you, I'm supposed to you be. just coexist. Yeah. <laughs> Right, exactly where I'm supposed to be. Uh, all right, so we talk about uh, we talked to Stephen about um, one of the big things of his is um, first principles of jiu jitsu. He talks about mm-hmm. the anchors and the um, the core foundation, understanding of the core foundation how jiu jitsu works essentially. Right? How how do you view a difference between principles versus techniques or steps or uh yeah that. i don't know would a principle be the umbrella and the techniques and the steps are underneath it well yeah but I'm, I'm saying how do you how do you what's your perspective on that right what's the purpose behind each which one you know how do you view this um i don't know i think it's, it's funny i think you could you probably you probably start with the techniques the steps and then you have, you learn the principles afterwards. You know, it's kind of backwards a little bit because you have to build some sort of foundation in order to understand um, the things you're doing within or underneath that umbrella, if that makes sense. So, you know, it's like, what does everybody want to do when they first get here? They want to learn techniques. They want to choke people. They want to learn arm bars. You know, they want to learn. They, it's all, you know. We talk about DECA all the time. They don't want to learn how to defend. They don't want to learn how to escape. They don't want to learn how to control. They just want to attack, attack, attack. <laughs> um, and, Savages. Right. And if you, don't, <laughs> if you don't learn those earlier things, I think more often than not, your attack is going to fail. Um, so I, I, that's kind of how I look at it. But I, I think that we all start not realizing, you know, we learn the principle maybe a little after we start, right? So you get you get your feet wet, you start developing a little something, and then you can understand the bigger picture, right? Because I, I, you can't, I don't think you can understand the bigger picture without um, um, having a little bit of knowledge <laughs> first. Well, like the, like the techniques are the things that we do, mm-hmm. but the principle would be why we do it. Sure. Right? That's mm-hmm. the reason. That's the cohesiveness. That's the understanding and comprehension why we do those specific steps. 
So at least in my mind is you you need both. The the steps will allow you to get go through the go through the path of what you're trying to achieve. But the principle will really really allow you to understand why you do it and when you would do it. Mm-hmm. So we find ourselves in these points where memorizing individual steps is very labor intensive. Right? right? But by having a larger principle umbrella of why this works mechanically allows us to apply the same principle in multiple different situations. Mm-hmm. Are you looking up the definition of what principle is? Well, I just want to, I'm looking up because I know we're, we're probably pretty far from what Steve actually talks about. So I yeah. Just wanna... Yeah, I know. But, um, you know, he, t- he talked about movement, mechanics, balance, gravity, things of that nature, you know, and I think a lot of, a lot of instructors, <clears throat> you know, especially these days when they, use the conceptual approach to jiu-jitsu is really to educate students on the larger picture, you know, the mechanics of the motions, not necessarily the steps, you know. So, you know, it, it's not necessarily you, you, you're squeezing somebody's neck, but you, you, you do specific principle, you apply where – the blood is getting cut off to the brain, and obviously the, mm-hmm. the result is the same, right? And if you use the same principle all across all the chokes, then your efficiency just went up, right? Mm-hmm. One, you don't have to memorize things one by one by one by one, but two, you have a deeper understanding why these specific things work the way they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, and what I like about that is then you, you have self-correction, in the moment, well, right? And this is th- this is where I think jujitsu turns into education. This is it goes beyond me making or me executing these five steps. This is where you essentially learn how to learn how to teach yourself, mm-hmm. right? You have an ability to self troubleshoot. You have an ability to self correct. You might not be able to correct everything, but you at least have. You have ability or you're learning the ability to ask right questions. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where a lot of it that's where a lot of it starts, right? When we are confused or we are not sure what to ask, we just say, Well, this doesn't work. Right. The question is why it doesn't work. Yes. Not which steps I'm not doing or I'm doing, but understanding really why it doesn't work to yeah. the core principle. You know, is it gravity pulling in one direction because you're off balance? Is it You're not falling because there was a post. You know, this person is not feeling pressure because of X, Mm -hmm. you know, and understanding these things. That's where you have an ability of saying, well, wait a minute. This is what should be happening. It's not happening. So now let's focus. How can I self-correct this for this to happen? And now Mm -hmm. we turning this into, I think, in a a more true, more true. Is that even a phrase? Um, into a, a true education point mm-hmm. where we are trying to not only solve problems, but now we are, you know, really learning, Yeah, you know, how yeah. to, how to navigate through these things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something that you learned for me? That learning takes place on the mat. Cause it's like, Oh, you know, it, you're analyzing in that moment and you're like, I'm just going to take that post away and boom success. Um, or is it something that you learned, um, through research, watching videos, well, you know, asking questions. For me, it's in the moment. It's like, uh, I, why am, what's preventing my forward progression? It's that post. Give me that post. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's always the post. It's always, always yeah. you know what I mean? Well, it's, I think, it's not unique to that particular yeah. second in that role. It's right. always that. Right. Uh, well, I think this all starts with the instructor. I think it all starts from that method of teaching because if, you know, we talk about, like, you know what was mind-blowing? Um, um, we had a seminar here and a phrase was made, we are always falling. Mm-hmm. We just have a post to support us. Yeah, it was, it, I'm trying to think if that was Felipe or somebody else, we're all. I don't remember. Um, no, that was 
it, uh, it wasn't uh, Octavio, was Octavio. it? It was. It yeah. was Octavio. Yeah, Professor Octavio. But, you know, and after being two decades on the mat, nobody has ever made that phrase. This was the first time I heard it. And it was it was interesting to comprehend that. Mm-hmm. Because it, if you really think about this, it's not about me pushing you. It's about me removing the post. Mm-hmm. And if I remove the post, gravity will do everything for you. Mm-hmm. Right, gravity will pull you down, and if you look at it from that conceptual side, things just completely change Mm -hmm. because I mean, this is me no longer trying to force you to get reversed or you fall or you got down to the ground. Right now, I'm focusing on where is your stability, and I'm going to simply remove it. Right, Right. and like when it comes to (coughs) stability and falling, like judo is phenomenal. That this is where they. You know, really emphasize Kazushi. You, you off balance your partner, and then yeah. they go down, right. right? But in in jujitsu, I think oftentimes we hyper focus on forcing our partner to be reversed, right? And don't take me wrong; there has to be some kind of force that initiates this. But oftentimes, focusing on removing the stability right. is where the easier path comes. Well, sure, so we're absolutely. not forcing it. There's no yeah. conflict of forces going in the opposite directions. Mm-hmm. Right, so th- this is what I, you know, you know. So you asked me a question: whether to start, and I think I, it really truly starts with with the instructor teaching that way. Because if that education doesn't is not projected in such way, then students will focus on individual steps. Mm-hmm. And again, you can still be very successful with this, but I think that it's more labor intensive because mm-hmm. now, you know, let's just I don't know you. you you talk about, you know, scissor sweep. There's probably two dozens of flavors of scissor, scissor sweep. And instead of learning all of a single one of them and really trying to recall them every single one, if you learn the principles of it, mm-hmm. now you can apply them all across all of them. And it right. becomes by far, by far easier to understand. Matter of fact, oftentimes you come up with your own flavor yeah. based on the principles that you have learned. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's applying... It's applying that why to multiple areas Mm -hmm. leading in the same direction. Yeah. But so you said it begins with the instructor teaching that way. Is that something you can teach right away to the first day student? You know, we always talk about like white belt language and stuff. Or is that too, is the, is the principle too much information when you first start? Yeah, and I, th- I think that will really depend on the instructor, right? Because the amount of oversaturation of information is is very common, especially at the beginning of the journey, and some instructors do a phenomenal job. You know, this is what separates phenomenal instructor from, from average. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Knowing how to dissect the information and send it out to the student so he his, comp- his or her comprehension is right on point. Yeah. Right, so I think introducing the principles from the very beginning is important because that's how they will begin thinking. But the amount of information you share about the principle is important too because the moment they start thinking about principles but they don't have anything to anchor on, this is where confusion will come in. This is where oversaturation, right? So like if you look at principle versus steps, principle will have by far more information but it will be will be applicable to multiple things all across the board. Right. Steps will be much by, by far easier to memorize because there's going to be three to five of them, but they will be applicable to only this one particular use case. Right. Right. So yeah. you you cannot reuse the same steps all across, or it's going to be much harder at least. Yeah. Well, so I, so you learn the steps, and then I think <laughs> you, somewhere along the lines you start learning but you the, the, you don't want to get in the habit of learning steps only either right no there has that, to be a point where you have to be we call i think i'm right now for some reason it's triggering the aha moment where it's like i know these steps for this i know the yeah. steps for that i know the steps yeah. for that other thing and then it's like aha mm-hmm. now i see how they all go together the big picture yeah and that's the con and i don't even know if that's a concept or a principle i think maybe the concept is underneath the principle so, like, if you've got the the org chart, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, you have your principle, you've got your concepts, and yeah. then you have your steps underneath yeah. all that. Um, but yeah, I think that you know it is important. 
You know, and again, this, this really base. It, this is really depends on the instructor. It really yeah. does because there are some phenomenal instructors. This is me as a me being an instructor and, and trying to relay the information I have in my head to to my students. I really try to learn and imp- continuously improve mm-hmm. how I relay the information. Right. You know, and I'm learning that more we think in a principal way, more we think in a conceptual way, easier it is a long run. Right. Now, it is hard to understand the principle at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. So it's this very fine line right. where you're teaching them simple things by you highlighting the principles. And then if you teach two, three, five, ten, thirty of techniques and they start having the same principles all across, this is where the light the, the light bulb moments mm-hmm. come out. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, this this is the same thing. Yes. Now we can reuse it. Yes. You know, and I can apply it in all these different <clears throat> situations. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, again, like in a very simplistic way, what um, um, Professor Octavia was talking about, we all falling unless there was a post supporting us. Mm-hmm. That's a very simple principle. Yeah. Very simple, right? And I think a principle like that could be taught anytime there is a reversal or some kind of you know, motion downward. Yeah, you don't have to you get know? into the weeds about exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Now, you know, that principle probably can be dissected into by formal granular approach mm-hmm. and and having a, multiple examples of how that simple principle can be applied. This is where I think complexities come in, you know. Yeah. And again, good instructors know to know how to maneuver through these situations and relay their information, right? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, we talk so many to so many people you know, at this point, and the common denominator is, is really the same. It's not how well you know jiu-jitsu, but how well you can relay that information to other person. And that's only half of the work mm-hmm. because how well they can understand it is the other part, right? So phenomenal educators, you know, do that very well. And, like, we see this in, you know, not all teachers, but some, yeah. you know. Yeah. They, like, I think we all, we, we talked about this in one episode, like, we – we we had some teachers way back when we were oh, younger, yeah. right? And yeah. they they made a tremendous impact. We might not remember what they taught us, but they definitely made an impact on us, mm-hmm. you know, with their approach and how they teach and what they do and and so on. So yeah. and I think a lot of us find ourselves in that position and you know driving um, to become one like that. Yeah. That that's I think it should be a desire or a goal for 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 all jujitsu instructors. There you go. All right, let's leave it there because I think that's a nice place. Later. See you. Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care. Mm-hmm.